Hi everyone, Just Thinny Dead Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Cannibal Corpse record, Violence Unimagined. This is the latest full-length LP from New York extreme metal legends, Cannibal Corpse. They're 15th, I believe, at this point, still going strong after 30 years as a band, which is, of course, an impressive amount of time, but it's really Cannibal Corpse's consistency over that span of time that has made them special. Now, the downside of that is the band has often been categorized as one-dimensional for never really retreating from the trademark death metal trappings that they held helped develop. But simultaneously, you can't really deny that over the years, the quality has always been there. I mean, if Cannibal Corpse is dropping an album, it's undoubtedly going to be one of the more respectable records in death metal for that year, I can guarantee it. There's something to be said for the fact that numerous death metal bands have come, gone, changed directions, shot themselves in the foot artistically within a fraction of the Cannibal Corpse lifespan. But this band remains unwavering even after numerous lineup changes as well as rapidly changing aesthetics of metal and extreme metal over the years. Now, this new LP over here actually sees a lineup change in the addition of lead guitarist Eric Rattan of Morbid Angel and Hate Eternal fame, who actually took on some songwriting duties here too, helping to fill the very large hole left by Pat O'Brien, who'd been rocking with the band since the 90s. I'm not sure how much this change has factored into the sonic change we are hearing with this new record, as Violence Unimagined feels like a slightly different version of the same beast, which for Cannibal Corpse record to record is usually the case. Just to go over some of the more recent releases from last decade, we had 2012's Torture, which was, yeah, a little muddy mix-wise, but easily one of the band's heaviest and chunkiest projects to date. By comparison, A Skeletal Domain a few years later was a bit tighter, featuring some flashy guitar work topping the band's usual mayhem. Meanwhile, Red Before Black saw the continuation of Cannibal Corpse's usually gruesome aesthetic but maybe with slightly more disorienting riff and groove changes. Now, while I may try to make these observations, keep in mind, from record to record with Cannibal Corpse, there's going to be more overlap than there is separation. The band rarely gravitates toward any idea or sound far enough to transition out of the death metal tag, even slightly. Now, Violence Unimagined continues that tradition. It's still very much a death metal record, but it's easily one of the most thrash-inspired set of tracks the band has dropped since the 90s. Now, given how meat and potatoes Cannibal Corpse's approach to death metal is, and how thrash metal sits at the foundation of death metal anyway, the style has already been deeply ingrained into the band's DNA. On nearly every one of their records, you could pick out riffs and grooves that are inspired by the likes of Slayer. But typically those ideas are cut with the blistering, brutal, dizzying, chromatic mayhem that marks most Cannibal Corpse records. Not so much this time. On this record we get non-stop, head-banging, riffs, soaring solos, sometimes that hit a pace that is uh, more like to speed metal. We get some incredible thrash vibes through the first run of the track list, Murderous Rampage, Necrogenic Resurrection, and the Mekinian Harvest. Sure, the tracks are heavy and overwhelming and deeply distorted, as well as topped with Corpse Grinder's legendary monstrous growls. But make no mistake, these are thrash metal tracks, from the intros to the lead lead guitars, to the riffing, to the transitions between various passages of these tracks, it sounds like it's something out of the late 80s. Which is not a bad thing, I'm not highlighting this or pointing this out to say, oh, they changed their sound, or even try to uh, pigeonhole this record or something. I mean, honestly, when it comes to thrash style guitars, drums, and soloing, this is some of the most kick-ass material I've heard in this vein in a while. The recording is really good too, it is so heavy it's meant to suffocate, but there is so much detail and tone in it. It's not so compressed that you lose the feel and the dynamics of these grooves. The drumming is really impressive too. It sounds masterful without feeling mechanical. I will say the bass is a little buried. Part of me does miss the raised growling kind of tone it had throughout much of skeletal domain. But in true thrash fashion, the point here is really for it to kind of melt in with the guitars and for all of them to just create this singular beam of distorted, thrashy, groovy riffage. Now, as I said earlier, the first leg of this record absolutely rips, even gets a bit topical on the track Condemnation Contagion, which is about a deadly disease spreading
spreading across the planet, the mortal and psychological impacts of that. Yeah, it's hair-raising, it hits quite close to home as well, and there is some callous natural selection language in there too, which is concerning because we haven't just been seeing this virus uh, attack and affect the weak, but also the most vulnerable in society economically and socially. But it is death metal, turning body count statistics into harrowing diatribes about the death of the human species is kind of its thing. If it's any consolation, the track Inhumane Harvest is about um, opening people alive in order to uh, keep afloat some kind of organ-based black market. And the song Bound in Deteria is a gruesome and detailed story of vengeance dealt by the victim on an abuser of theirs. If you dig deeper into the lyrics on this thing, you will find more stories like these, and only bands like Cannibal Corpse can turn truly awful things into the songs that they do. Now, there is a bit of a sonic switch up on this project that comes in the form of Ritual Annihilation. The band goes into more of a classic, heavy, pounding death metal style, complete with crushing guitars, double bass, riffs and rhythms that are so chaotic, very little of it translates, which is somewhat of a reminder of what the band could have been doing on this record up until this point. It's not my favorite cut on the LP, but it is undeniably twisted. There are some awesomely demented guitar passages around the midpoint of the song as well. Follow the Blood Further varies the track list of this record with some slower tempos, even harder hitting riffs, ones that are sort of stretched out and growl, sync up with the drums very nicely. The soloing on the back end adds some melodic flavor that you wouldn't necessarily expect on a Cannibal Corpse record too. But toward the end of the record, I think the band starts to beat a dead horse a little bit, even though that does sound like something they'd write a really epic song about. For me, Slowly Sawn actually feels like being slowly sawn as I'm sitting through it. I just want them to pick up the goddamn chainsaw and get it over with. There are riffs like this that hit way harder earlier on the record, and on top of that, the transitions the band works in from riff to riff uh, have very little in the momentum department, kind of carrying the vibe and the groove from one section of the track to another. It just kind of feels very choppy. Over Torture saves some of the most extreme noise and layers for last. God, this track is overpowering, but uh, the constant snares throughout multiple passages do get a bit mind-numbing. I feel like if the band was going to throw in a song this short and this edgy and this extreme, just at this spot on the LP, they could have pushed the envelope further. Then the closing track is about being buried alive in the skin of another person who is also alive, but then also being unburied ritualistically and then just kind of existing that way, which is obviously an insane and totally sick narrative for the track to take on. But compositionally and riff-wise, I will say this track I think is a bit unceremonious as a closer outside of the atmospheric guitar layers that kind of swallow the outro of the song. I think I will leave my thoughts on this LP there. It is crushing, it is brutal, it is gruesome, it's nasty, it's disgusting, disgusting, it's mean, it's just bestial. Just like any good Cannibal Corpse record should be, but like many other releases in the band's catalog, they do write themselves into a corner at some point. But still, true to what I said earlier in the review, this is still one of the better death metal albums I've heard so far this year, and part of me really does mess with the increase in thrash vibes for a good portion of the record, too. I'm feeling a decent two strong seven on this one. Tran, Zish, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Cannibal Corpse, uh, forever.